Okay, in this uh, video, we're going to go over something called ratios and proportions. But we're going to go over ratios and proportions specifically with um, similar polygons. Okay, now remember that a polygon is just a many-sided figure. And a ratio and a proportion is basically some kind of a quotient. Remember when a quotient just means some kind of a division problem. So for example, let's say I have two quantities, okay? Let's say I have uh, five apples and I've got six apples in another basket, let's say, okay? What's the ratio of apples to apples in the two baskets? And you could write that ratio as a quotient, like I said, which is five over six. You could also say six over five. That would mean that this bushel or this basket goes first, this basket goes second. You can also write this ratio this way. And you'll see this a lot, especially when we're dealing with polygons and um, geometric figures. Okay, so this is also another way of writing ratios or proportions. Now, here's, here's an interesting uh, thing as well. Another way of writing this, another nomenclature if you want, is let's say I had a third basket and this basket had like eight apples in it. And you wanted to compare the ratios between these three baskets. Now, it would be awkward to write it as a ratio, uh, as a quotient, wouldn't it? But it's more common to write it this way. So, for example, five, uh, full colon six, full colon eight. That would be saying that you're comparing this basket to this basket to this basket. Okay, so those are just some introductory terms. Now let's go ahead and see what it would look like, for example, in a polygon problem. Again, polygon, just a many-sided, poly meaning many, many-sided figure. So let's say I had something like this. I have a triangle of some kind, okay? <coughs> and... One thing I know about triangles is that the different angles, the interior angles, add up to 180 degrees, don't I? And let me also say that in this particular triangle, the interior angles have a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. How can I figure out what the specific uh, angles are for each one of those interior angles, huh? what the specific measure is. Well, if the ratio is 1 to 2 to 3, and these are all unknown, I could rewrite this as 1x, because remember, x is an unknown, to 2x to 3x. Now, essentially what I am saying is that one of these angles, and it really doesn't make any difference which ones you label which, right? 1x, 2x, 3x. Well, now I have a way of combining the information that I knew about triangles, right? Which is the interior angles equal 180 degrees with what I have here. And I could solve this algebraically. What I can actually end up doing then is saying x, 1x rather, plus 2x plus 3x is equal to 100 and 80 degrees. And now it's just a matter of solving this, doesn't it? So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So I get 6x is equal to 180 divided by 6. x is equal to 30. And then I can just go back and fill in each one of these particular x's. And so what I would have here is a 30 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay, and that's how I would use this kind of information to solve ratios and proportions. Now let me give you another example. And I'm going to cite some information that we've learned in a previous video. Actually, let me just move this out of the way. And let's say I have this figure here. Okay, now those of you who remember how to name polygons, I would count one, two, three, four, five. So this is a five-sided figure. This would be a pentagon. 
penta meaning five, right? And I know that the interior angles of a pentagon follow this formula. So the interior angles equal n minus 2 times 180. And remember that n represents the number of sides in the figure. So I can figure this out. It would be 5 minus 2 is equal to 180. That gives me 3 times 180. That gives me 540 degrees, interior degrees, in a pentagon. Okay? Let's say I also know that the ratio of the interior angles of this particular pentagon are as follows. 1 to 2 to 4 to 5 to 6. How can I figure out what the interior angles are, each one of these individually? Okay? Using the similar logic that we did in the last example, we would just do this. Uh, and again, it doesn't really make any difference which one's the 1, the 2, the 4, the 5, and the 6, because we can, these aren't necessarily all uh, drawn to scale, right? So we'll call this 1x. We'll call this one here 2x. We'll call this one 4x. We'll call this one 5x. And we'll call this large angle 6x. Okay? And then I just go ahead and add those all up and equal 540 degrees. So I'd say, first step, x plus 2x plus 4x plus 5x plus 6x is equal to 540. Step two, let's go ahead and add up all our like terms. It gives me 3, uh, 7, 12, 18. 18x is equal to 540. 18, uh, 540 divided by 18 is, quick calculation here to the side, 30. 1, 2, 3. x is equal to, again, 30 degrees. And then just go back and plug in your answers, okay? And this would become 30. This one would be 60. This would be 120. This would be 150. And this would be 180. And again, how would I prove that that's true? Add up these interior angles. Step four, we'll call this one check. And then let's add 30 plus 60 plus 120 plus 180 plus 150. And you do that on your calculator and you get, sure enough, 540. And your answer checks out. Okay, so just as a brief review, remember that ratios can be written as quotients or as divisions, but they can also be written this way. Uh, remember that the um, you can actually do more. <clears throat> you can compare things as long as they're the same units now, okay? Notice that these are on apples. These were always in degrees. If they weren't in the same units, you'd have to change it. <clears throat> but once you've done that, you can actually go ahead and label things with your unknown x and then solve for the problem with whatever information you have. Okay, I hope that was helpful.